شلام لاخ مريم ملي طيبوثا نار العماخ مريخات المشي ومورخ بيرت خرسيري شو ناط مريم يلي تقالها صلح لابين حطاي هاشا وشاب الموثن آمين Well, um, we just came out of an election uh, about two weeks ago, and uh, we are happy that everything went peacefully and Nigeria is still intact. Uh, many people predicted that uh, with this election, Nigeria is going to break into pieces. And uh, all the indicators and the signals leading to the election uh, gave us a lot of concern that these predictions would be true. Uh, but we thank God that uh, the elections came and are gone. The incumbent was defeated, uh, a Christian. Uh, a Muslim has come to power now in the country and um, we are so happy that the outcome of this election has helped to bring peace in the country because if the Christian had won that election we believe there will have been a lot of skirmishes, clashes and blood uh, shed. Uh, Muslims or the Muslim who won this election has uh, made three attempts in becoming a president and uh, didn't make it. Uh, and on two occasions each time he lost there were a lot of bloodshed. Um, so this time if he had lost again it would have been the same thing. Uh, but we thank God that he won and we are praying uh, for him and his government that uh, they will be able to put right all the uh, areas that need some attention within the country. So that is it on the political uh, level. On the level of religion where terrorism comes in, um, with uh, the 2011 national elections, uh, immediately uh, those elections were, the results were announced and the Christian won uh, and the Muslim lost. Uh, we saw the birth of the Boko Haram, uh, which has been terrorizing uh, uh, lives and destroying, killing and destroying uh, uh, lives and properties. Uh, particularly in northern Nigeria. Now, uh, we have two expressions of Boko Haram. Uh, one expression of Boko Haram is found in the northeastern part of Nigeria, places like Meiduguri or Borno State, Yobe, and Adamawa, which are in the uh, northeastern part of Nigeria. And the dominant Muslim ethnic group there are called the Kanuris. Now the Kanuris are trying to form a caliphate and they are the majority uh, of members in the Boko Haram. And uh, they invade Christian communities uh, whereby they kill Christians, they destroy their properties, they drive them out from their ancestral homes. Um, they ask some to convert to Islam and those who refuse to convert uh, either killed or sometimes driven away from their ancestral home. 
uh, a good number of them displaced and they had to live on top of hills for a long time. Uh, so Christians generally um, have been at the receiving end of their activities. Um, but coming back to where I come from, I'm Bishop of Kafenchan uh, in the northwest of Nigeria, uh, in a state called Kaduna State. Kaduna State is a miniature of Nigeria, a balanced population of Christians and Muslims. In the northern part of Kaduna State, Muslims are in the majority. In the southern part of Kaduna State, Christians are in the majority. I am in the southern part. Now, Christians in southern Kaduna have defied and resisted Islamization for, I can say, um, since the advent, uh, over a hundred years. Over a hundred years, uh, our parents uh, and ourselves have resisted Islamization. Uh, so all effort to Islamize the southern part of Kaduna State have not really worked. But we see a new form of attack on Christianity. Um, and this attack is being carried out by another Islamic group called the Fulani Hetzmen. Uh, the Fulani Hetzmen, uh, they are also Muslims. They are just another expression of Boko Haram. Uh, they will enter Christian settlements, and as they enter these settlements, they come very often at night with sophisticated weapons, and um, they kill, they destroy property, they maim, and leave many people displaced without any place uh, to stay. Since the year 2011 up to this time, uh, my diocese, this is the part of the church in which I administer to, has suffered more than 53 attacks by the Fulani headsmen. In some attacks, for example, in a place called uh, in Sangha local government and also in Kaura local government, they have left on three different occasions not less than 100 people killed at a time. And when you have up to 100 people killed, the only kind of burial you can do is mass burial. So there have been more than three mass burials within my diocese in the last four years. But as I told you, there have been over 53 serial attacks by the Fulani uh, headsmen. And in these attacks, there is known that a handful of people are not being killed Houses are being burnt down, and people are rendered homeless, and things like that. Uh, so this is the picture um, that we want the whole world to know, that there are two expressions of Boko Haram. The one in the northeast that is driven by the Kanuri people, that also identify Christian settlements and go all out to kill, to maim, to destroy, and to displace. And then you have the other expression of Boko Haram, which you find in the southern part of Kaduna State, then in what they call the entire Middle Belt area of Nigeria, which is the north central parts of Nigeria, where you have places like Jaws, like Benue, and these places, uh, Southern Kaduna in the Northwest, uh, North Central, um, have always been attacked serially by a group of Muslims they call the Fulani Hetzmen. 
and uh, they have done a lot of harm uh, on many people. So this is the story in which uh, we have been living in uh, that uh, is not as if we have provoked anybody. It's not as if Christians did something to provoke anyone. Uh, the simple reason is that they are being attacked for, uh, for simply being Christians. And uh, the whole intention which the attackers have never hidden, uh, they have said uh, the attacks are not um, uh, motivated by any sentiments but religious sentiments. And their intention is to see that within northern Nigeria there does not exist Christianity. Uh, and uh, this is the whole effort in which they are uh, undertaking this, that by doing this, uh, there will be no presence of Christianity uh, in northern Nigeria. But also within northern Nigeria, um, Christians have uh, suffered all forms of discrimination on the basis of their religion. We are talking about places like uh, Sokoto State, Katsina State, Kano State. Um, you now come to uh, Bochi State uh, and in the northeastern part. Um, the, the, the states that belong to the core north generally, Christians have been victims of a lot of uh, discrimination. The discrimination is always in the following areas. Uh, sometimes they uh, will want permission to build places of their worship. They will not be granted uh, land ownership to erect churches and places of worship. Uh, myself, I'm speaking from experience. I stayed in Kano, which is a very dominant Islamic area, uh, for about five years. And we made serious attempts uh, just to get a piece of land, uh, to be able to build a church where we have a large gathering of our people. And, uh, more than seven times we will start the building, more than seven times it will be brought down. Then in one other place, we paid money uh, to the tune of over two million. We are talking about um, 20 years ago, and 20 million, sorry, two million Naira was big money. And uh, so we paid two million Naira uh, to buy a piece of land where we intended to build a school and also have a church within it. Uh, but when they discovered that we are the, op the people trying to buy this land, uh, they didn't give back our money to us and the land was confiscated. So I'm talking from experience, it's not as if somebody uh, says something like this, that Christians have been discriminated against uh, in trying to get uh, places of worship. Um, in uh, most of the, uh, if you go to get a piece of land in places like Kanu, Sokoto, uh, Katsina, uh, Bauchi, others that I have mentioned, um, if they give you the certificate, they will say that uh, this land that has been sold to you should not be used to build a beer parlor or be used to build a brothel this is where prostitutes stay, or be used to build a church. So you can see they put the church on the same level with brothels and drinking parlors. And this is something uh, very painful. So we suffered discrimination on that regard. But we also suffered discrimination uh, in the area of job opportunities. The fact that you bear the name, uh, a Christian name, uh, you can have the qualification, the merits, but very often uh, you are discriminated against on that very uh, 
basis. Uh, people have been, Christians have been discriminated against sometimes in acquiring burial sites. Uh, they will request for such burial sites. Uh, in some of these places that I have mentioned their names, and again, uh, you will not uh, be, they are not given uh, any rights uh, in this area. So apart from the incessant attacks that we are having right now, uh, we also see that there is a kind of institutionalized uh, discrimination that is uh, directed against uh, Christians within uh, northern Nigeria. So these are all some of the things that we feel um, the, the world should be aware of. And um, we are very much uh, hoping that uh, uh, Nigeria being a very plural society, diverse in terms of ethnicity and its, its composition and makeup, that uh, we want a Nigeria, a country, uh, where every citizen uh, has the right to freedom of worship. Uh, it does not matter whether it is a Muslim or a Christian. Our desire is that this right should be entrenched uh, for everybody. Uh, no one should be discriminated against on the basis of his religion or his ethnicity. Uh, and uh, we are looking forward for a Nigeria that is for all Nigerians and uh, a Nigeria that um, uh, a kind of respects what we call liberal democracy, uh, liberal democracy that provides an equal level playing ground for everybody to strive to realize his potentials and not to have what they call dual ideology, whereby you have one ideology for uh, one people of one religion and another ideology for people of another religion. I think the Nigeria we desire and long for uh, is a Nigeria that recognizes our diversity and uh, seeks to transform that diversity into sources of strength and not to allow it to become a reason for conflict, for fighting, and um, other things that uh, we are talking about. So even now with this election, where we have a Muslim as the president of the country, uh, this is what we will want to see happen, that um, the democratic principles are entrenched, are respected, uh, religion, uh, no religion should be, nobody should favor one religion against the other, but effort should be made to see that all religions are treated equally and fairly, and uh, we are able to live uh, in peace with one another. Definitely uh, the persecutions that the church has been undergoing uh, has not discouraged or made people to lose their faith. Uh, and I am happy that uh, in our teachings and preaching, uh, we tell people that this is not a time to become discouraged or become faint-hearted or to take to flight and run away. Uh, but this is the time to stand firm, uh, to be courageous, and to profess our faith with more commitment and zeal than we have done in the past. And so uh, these persecutions um, have not in any way demoralized the people, except that there may be one or two people that fear for their lives, and that is understandable. Uh, but on the general, uh, uh, it has rather emboldened the people and further brought us together as the body of Christ uh, to work firmly 
in seeing that um, we do not a kind of uh, give up our faith on account of these trials, uh, but to see that um, by being attacked uh, the way in which we are doing, they are all indications and uh, ex uh, pointers to the fact that uh, we are living the faith and doing our best to live the faith. And it is on account of that that uh, the church is being attacked. There are many challenges that uh, the church in Nigeria uh, is facing uh, right now as a result of persecution. <coughs> uh, and one of them is how to keep faith alive, keep faith alive in the hearts of the faithful, to tell them uh, not to lose heart or become faint-hearted, uh, but to encourage them uh, that um, these persecutions aim at strengthening, renewing their own faith and not at uh, making them to give up their own faith. I have always used words like, this is not time for flight, this is time to fight. Now when I talk of fighting, I'm saying this is the time to stand firm and to resist anything that will want to make you uh, give up your own faith. Uh, so uh, in everything that uh, we do uh, in our teachings and in our homilies, uh, what we see to be uppermost is on how to give encouragement to those who are suffering, who are being persecuted and something like that. Uh, the other area of challenge is that of rehabilitating those that um, have lost property, lost homes. There are some that it is their entire life uh, earnings that were destroyed. Uh, for example, if you have spent your whole time trying to build a home, and uh, within a twinkling of an eye, it is burnt down. Uh, it also becomes quite um, a big area of challenge. And so it is efforts to help people to rebuild uh, themselves, first to rebuild their homes, uh, and then to try to live on. There's no guarantee that after rebuilding, this thing will not be destroyed. Uh, as I told you, there have been many Christian properties like churches that they will build today, uh, tomorrow they are destroyed. They will rebuild, the next day they are destroyed. Uh, but we have never given up uh, in all these things. So, uh, the, the first challenge is to keep faith alive in the hearts of people. The second is to find ways to help them to rehabilitate uh, themselves and start living uh, once again. Um, the third challenge is um, trying to help people uh, to pray against these evils and also to be alert and vigilant uh, to see if uh, they will be able to repel this when they come. And so uh, the whole thing of vigilance uh, is one of the things too that we try to encourage people. Uh, you should not go to attack anybody, but uh, if all of you in the community are awake, uh, it may be possible sometimes to repel the attacks that are being directed uh, against you. So these are all challenges that we have. 
Um, it is supposed to be the responsibility of government to give us all the protection that we want. But unfortunately, uh, government herself is overwhelmed and almost powerless. And so the, the people become, their condition become more vulnerable, very precarious. So if the government is not there to give you the support and the protection that you need, uh, you must see yourselves whether some kind of initiative by the communities to repel uh, aggression could also be, be done. So these are all the challenges the, we, we have before us uh, in trying to work on the people to see that um, uh, they stand up in faith uh, to a kind of uh, give some protection uh, to their lives and to their properties and not to always sleep off and they are taken on our uh, each time uh, the attackers uh, come in.